All right. Welcome. We're going to do this in English. I hope that's all right. I do understand perfect Swedish. I do speak perfect Swedish. I'm just much cooler in English. <laughs> so I figured I'd do this in English. Before I get started, before I get into myself, um, I just have to tell you guys a story. Um, I do a lot of consulting for, for sports club businesses, different athletes and so forth. And, and a couple days ago, I was consulting a um, very prestigious, uh, successful sports club down in southern Sweden. Uh, after meeting with them with a couple days, they presented their problem. They wanted me to help them, give them feedback, what, what they could do to get better, to further themselves as a club. Um, and it was a tough situation because they've been very successful in the past couple years. But anyways, on the way home, flying home, I sat next to a lovely lady and uh, we got to talking. And after a while, I noticed that her wedding ring was on her pinky finger. So me being me, I just, I couldn't help but ask. After a couple hours, or, or a couple minutes of flying, sorry. I said, I'm sorry, but you know, why are you wearing your wedding ring on your wrong finger? She looked at me very calmly, very determined, and said, I married the wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> I giggled just like you guys and laughed and didn't think much of it, but right when I landed, I emailed the sports club and I said, you guys are married to the wrong person, the wrong belief system. Whatever their problem was, they were married to the wrong belief system. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Whether you guys are married, not to the right person, I don't want to get into that, <laughs> but if you guys are married to the right belief system. My name is Andrew Plake, um, born and raised in the United States, moved here when I was about 11, moved back when I was about 16, 17, went to high school, college, did all that. Then I played professional basketball for about 11 to 12 years throughout Europe. Um, now I work for the sports club here in town, cool from other group basket. As you heard, my Swedish is very good. <laughs> um, I, I run the run the club here, here in, in this building, and uh, I do a lot of lectures like this of, of helping people further themselves. And what I've realized throughout the years that it's all the same, whether it's business whether it's your love life, whether it's parenting, sports, it's all the same mentality, the same attitude. Setting goals, achieving them, trying to reach them, having breakthroughs, having tough days, how do I get past those tough days? It doesn't matter, whatever it is you're trying to achieve or evolve or get better, and obviously you guys are, otherwise you wouldn't be here this, this, this day today. There's something that you want to further in your life. And hopefully today we can get some ideas how to change it or make it better. We do have paper and pen if, if you guys want to write stuff down, by the way. So feel free if we want to pass it around, whatever. Um, otherwise, we do have smartphones and stuff like that. Then we'll be we'll be working a little bit on, on setting goals and writing goals, so it'll probably be good by then to pass the paper around. I'm sorry we didn't do that. getting ready for next week's game or tournament. They always talk about in the future. And for me, it's been very obvious it is there are no big events in life, right? I mean, there, there's nothing that we're getting ready for. It should be every single day should be that you're developing, you're taking a step forward. And that's a mentality that we always talk and we always ask them, how many days do you have left, right? Whatever. Whatever your religion is, whatever you believe in, whatever universe you think is, or however it's happened or developed or our creator or whatever's happened, you get one life, one body, 75 years if you're lucky. 
unfortunate for me, this is a phase that I'm stuck with. This is a phase that I got, I gotta make the most of it, right? <coughs> now, it's up to me to either say, wow, I broke my nose eight times, I feel bad for myself, or decide, you know what, I'm gonna own it. This is me. This is who I am. This is me today. I wanna get better and better and better. Not that you want a couple years, in a couple days, a couple months, whatever it may be, looking through the future all the time. And that's that's hard. To have that mentality to always live in the moment is hard to have. Especially when we're talking to 15, 16 year old kids who don't understand that, you know, one life is short. You know, we, we've all come to the age that we know our days are counted. We know that we have to make the most of it, right? <clears throat> Obviously other guys, you guys wouldn't be here today, knowing that we want to make a difference. Who in here has ever failed? There was a little hesitation. Some people didn't want to admit it first. Like, uh, what are some of the reasons why you guys have failed? Anyone want to offer? You guys can answer in Swedish. That's fine for me. Like I said, I understand. Any any reasons why we failed? No reasons why. We can't think of it. A lot of times I hear people say, well, not enough time. Right? Not enough money. The wrong people around me. The wrong leadership. My players always tell me, well, I have a, I have a bad coach. <laughs> but those are all resources. Right? Those are all resources, we say. And for me, that, that has nothing to do with it, unfortunately. If you use those excuses, I'm sorry, but you're full of shit. The most important thing is resourcefulness, being creative. How many times have we, have we try to convince someone something and we've had to go a different route I have to do this with my four-year-old all the time. He's more stubborn than, than his mother, which is impossible, <laughs> right? Trying to convince them of something and I have to get them to see a different path. Now, if I, if I always rely on my resources, it's gonna be hard. Instead of thinking, I gotta think of a creative way, a new way to change their mentality or see them things a different light. And that's what it comes down to. Are we blaming stuff on resources or is it our lack of resourcefulness? Do we understand that difference? The creativity of trying to get stuff. There's always ways to find money, ways to find more time. I don't think, I don't think that one can really blame it on the resources. There's three decisions, three decisions that shape destiny, okay? Number one, what is it I'm going to focus on? What is my state of mind? What is it I'm focusing on? Because whatever we focus, whatever we focus on at that moment, we know we're going to feel that. All right? If I say, well, I have 40 people looking at me, oh my God, what are they thinking? I'm speaking this, they don't understand. If I start focusing on those things, all of a sudden I'm gonna feel nervous, I'm gonna feel that I'll have anxiety, I have to perform well. Instead of focusing, well, I get, I get to change and help 40 people today. Hopefully I get to touch one person, hopefully one person here listens to what I'm saying, understands one thing I'm saying, one sentence. And they walk out and say, well, you know that one thing he said at five after, that's gonna change my life, or help me change my life in the future. So again, what is it we're focusing on? That decision will change your lives, just thinking of that. And understand also, the choice, the power of choice is ultimate, the best attribute we have. We get to decide. How amazing is that? We get to decide. Whether you want, you could stand up right now, walk out, and I could do nothing about it. You get to decide. Every single moment we live, we decide everything we do. And we understand that power. We understand the power we have to change our lives, change the people's lives around us, to lift people up. What is it we're focusing on? Again, and the second one is, what does it mean? Is this the end or the beginning of something that's happening? I always tell people when we talk about relationships, right, you should treat every relationship like it's the beginning of a relationship and not the end. Right? Because we know, we know if we see the end of a relationship happening, how do we treat people? A little differently, right? Compared to the beginning. I remember I separated from, from uh, my kid's mother. And I remember the beginning of that relationship, if she would ask me, hey, Andrew, uh, can you take out the trash? I'll take out the trash. <laughs> right? 
at the end of the relationship, and you can take out the trash. Take out your own trash. I'm not your janitor. Right? What it, what is it that I was focusing on? What did it mean? Was it the end of the beginning? I treated it like it was the end of the relationship. My mentality became different. It was the same question, the same person asking, and all of a sudden I looked at it completely different. So treat every relationship like it's the beginning. And you'll notice you have a lot more fun more relationships. The second or the third one is, what am I going to do about it? Every decision we have, am I going to give up or am I going to move forward? When faced with my separation, two kids, was I going to give up on life, feel sorry for myself, or to say, you know what, this is going to open up new doors. This is the beginning of something new. What does this mean for me? Finding happiness. Finding someone that I love. Finding someone that I want to live with. So it's always, what does this mean? What are we going to do about it? We always have that decision. In our society, we talk a lot about success. Right? We measure success, we look at success with people, we follow success with people. We always want to know what is success. What I want to do now, we're going to go together two and two, okay? And I want you guys to talk, what is your definition of success? How do we measure it? What does it mean? What does it mean to be successful? Okay, two and two, talk. You can talk in Swedish.
Shalek? Yeah. When you said goal, just setting a goal or, or reaching a goal? Reach it, so reaching a goal. So I'll put it to you. It was just merely your definition. Okay. Anyone else? stuck with me from since I was about 11 years old. Okay, this poem was something read to me by, by uh, my mother and and uh, for me it defines success and a lot of what you guys have talked about today. Okay. At God's footstool to confess the poor man knelt and bowed his head. I failed, he cried. The master said thou did thy best that is success. So one thing that we talk about in success would be our effort. Okay? And according to this poem, and, and according to me, the definition of success, you guys get cold? The definition of success, who measures that success? Who's the only person who can measure this? Says, we know the answer. It's ourselves. A lot of times in our society, and this drives me crazy, is we always want to compare ourselves with people. We always want to measure ourselves. Where am I? What grades am I getting? How much money do I make? How much do I weigh? What do I look like? It drives me absolutely insane. It's sort of language, but I go fucking crazy when I hear people talk about, well, yeah, but he has this, she has that. But what do you, what do you want yourself? What effort are you putting into it? That isn't successful because you have certain resources or materials, right? It's all about our effort. And again, that happiness, love, balance, gratefulness, strength, health, determination, a lot of that comes from the effort we put into it. Health is definitely, we, as we've learned, I'm sure you guys have learned today and you already know, taking care of your body, what do we eat, what do we put into our system, how do we sleep, how do we rest, how do we... Uh, work out. That has a lot to do with health. Balance, obviously. How much effort are we putting into the stuff that matter in our lives? Love. How much effort are you putting into love and getting love or receiving love and giving love? So everything comes down and boils down to the effort that you try and give, and give to it. So don't ever get caught up in measuring with other people what they have what they don't have. It always comes down to what effort am I putting into this? And also, I'll tell you this, it's pretty scary looking at that. Because a lot of times we get by on things that we say, well, I was the best today. I might walk out of here today and I might have 40 people say, well, that was the best lecture I ever gave. But I personally feel like, well, I was shit today. Because again, I look at my own effort. Or vice versa, you guys might walk out and say, man, Andrew, he's, he has no idea what he's talking about. 
but I gave my best effort, best effort, and I'm pleased with that. Again, I only relate to this. This is my success. Whatever am I putting into it? So whatever situation you find yourselves in or put yourselves into, only measure that. And again, no one else can measure that. And when you're satisfied with your effort, you'll notice your life will take, just, just go off. It would just move forward and move forward and move forward. But an important part of it also is goals. Okay? We all have goals in life. We want to achieve goals. We want to set goals. We want to reach goals and new goals and new goals and develop. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take five minutes. And here I want everyone to take a pen and paper. Because this is for you. And you're going to keep this pen and paper. And re relate back to it from time to time. Does everyone have, you can use your smartphones too. It works for me. Does anyone need paper pen? Pins are getting passed around. We have it for, for uh, a couple hours, even sometimes a couple days. So we're going to do the short version of this. You guys need five minutes. That's all you need. By telling about your answers, I can tell you guys are a much further group than the groups that, that, that we usually talk to. So five minutes should be plenty for you guys. But what are you going to do here? Okay? When everybody gets a pen, is we're going to write down any goals that we have, anything you want to do, anything you want to accomplish, anything you want to master, anything you want, anywhere you want to go. Any goal you can think of. I want to lose weight. I want to gain weight. I want to make money. I want to be happy. I want to find balance. I want to find love. Whatever it is you can think of. Whatever it is you can think of, write it down. Be creative. The pen should just be flowing for five minutes straight here. Okay? There are no bad answers. These are yours and yours alone. Okay? This is for you. Okay? I did this for a group uh, last week. 15-year-olds. And the best answer I heard was, you also got to be beef. <laughs> okay. So, these are for you. And if you can't think of any, then the first one should be I need to find some goals. God damn it. Here we go. Go. <laughs>
this I did this a couple years ago. Uh, we had a workshop we were doing for uh, an entire weekend, and one person at answered, "Well, I want to have more money." One of the people that was doing the lecture with me were three guys doing the lecture, and the lady that stood up and said, oh, "I want more money." One of the guys that was doing it, he walked up to her and gave her hundred crowns. <laughs> now you have more money. So, this, and, and the reason why I bring that up is that you want to be specific, okay, eventually. Now, now we're being creative now, so we're just writing stuff down and we're going to get into, we're going to work a little more with these goals. But eventually you want to be a little more specific in what you do. Be careful what you wish for also. Like she said, I want more money, she got more money. Okay? And we're going to, we're, I'm going to challenge a little bit why we don't do or why are we achieving our goals? Why is it we're not doing it? Okay? What does it actually mean? Before we get into that, we talk a lot about when we set our goals, sometimes we get stuck, right? We get stuck, I, I, like for me, oh, I want to lose weight. Okay? Well, I get stuck somewhere. There's somewhere I need to have a breakthrough. I need, like, I need something to change my mindset to give me that breakthrough. A breakthrough is a moment in time when you realize or feel something that pushes you past it. All right, we've all had that. Has anyone had that? Where we've had that breakthrough where just something clicks, makes you see something differently, and all of a sudden, I got it. I achieved it. Has anyone experienced it? Not all of us? No, nothing? One set more goals then, okay? The more goals we set, the more breakthroughs you're gonna have to have. How do we have a breakthrough, okay? This is very simple. We refer to the three S's. Okay, I'm going to tell you the three S's, and I'm not going to tell you necessarily in order. The last one is the most important, but they're, they all are very important. The first one is you have to have a strategy. A strategy. You have to find a way how to achieve our goal. What is my strategy, strategy to achieve that goal? In our world today, as you know, all the spam mail that we get and emails that we get, it's hard to ignore all the information we have. We're in an inf information culture now. There's information all around us. There's strategies to find all around us. If it's diets, if it's be happier, work out, make more money, your kids need to practice here and, and try this. There's information everywhere. So a strategy is easy to find. So strategy is anything that we develop in order for us to find our path and, and try to get what we want to get. The next one is story. Story is the story that you tell yourself. Okay? It's a belief. Um, for example, I have, or I, I used to have a real problem with sugar. I used to eat a lot of sugar. When I, when I stopped playing, my weight ballooned up. I got, not fat, but I got bigger, okay? I ate a lot of sugar, and the story that I kept telling myself was, oh, I'm addicted to sugar. I'm addicted to sugar, that's why I eat muffins. So every time I go take a muffin, or a cookie, or a candy, oh, but I'm addicted to sugar. I can't help it. <laughs> that was the story that I convinced myself, okay? Someone once said, if you tell a lie long enough, loud enough, and often enough, you believe it. That's what Hitler said. And we all become our own Hitlers. We all tell ourselves, I don't have the time. All right, I'm big bone. I'm, I'm addicted to sugar. Right? We tell ourselves these stories over and over. Everyone in here does it. We've done it at some point. We convince ourselves, oh, get a point to teeth. Right? That's a story we keep telling ourselves over and over. You have to look at it and realize the truth. What is the truth? What is what are the facts? Not make it worse, but what are the facts? What is the situation? What is it you want to change? What story are you telling yourself? Now, the most important one is, the most important S is state. State is 
say is the mindset. What mindset do I have? What am I focusing on? By focus, we talk about feeling. How many times have you been talking to someone, it could be a loved one, it could be a friend, it could be a coworker, and all of a sudden, you snap on them for no reason. You know it wasn't their fault, and sometimes, in fact, afterwards, you feel bad about yelling at them or reacting a certain way, but it was your state of mind, your state of mind, that caused you to be that way. It had nothing to do with them. We recognize that, as that happened to us? Or so, whatever we're focusing on makes us act a certain way. If we can change that, that's the most important one. If we can change that, it will open up new doors. What is it we're focused on? What is our state of mind? So find a strategy, tell ourselves the right story, right? Because again, if you tell yourself something long enough, you'll start believing it. You will become that. I became sugar addicted because I kept telling myself. And what state of mind do we have? What is it we're choosing to focus on? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our goals. You're gonna circle one goal, the most important one, the one you wanna to change today. Find that one goal, and you're gonna make a strategy for it. How am I going to achieve this? So I saw one, yours was the family of abundance, okay? How, are, how am I going to achieve that today? What am I going to change so that if I'm working out one time a week here, I want to work out six times a week, how am I going to get to that spot? Make a strategy. Make a plan right now. Boom. Go. <laughs>
achieving goals okay and we have to be a little careful about that if we if we merely look at it and remember I talk a lot about efforts when it came to, to, to success but when it comes to goals sometimes we set goals too high right we've all done that I'm sure and a lot of times we set goals way too low for me growing up when I was in Sweden between 11 and 16, at 16 years old, I was top five players in Europe, all of Europe and basketball. Not my position, but all of basketball. I was going to be, since my mother's Swedish, I have dual citizenship, I was going to be the first Swedish player to play in the NBA. NBA is the highest basketball league in the world, if you guys can know. That was my goal in life. That's what everyone talked about. That's all I focused on, okay? I never played in the NBA. Does that mean all of a sudden that I was unsuccessful? When I look back on my life, not at all. I feel like I've been pretty successful. I had a goal since I was seven to be a professional athlete, make money on my sport, travel the world, meet different cultures, meet different people, eat different food, learn different languages. I would feel that I've been pretty successful and very fortunate. So again, don't always measure your success and direct relationship to your goals. Because sometimes, for whatever reason, certain things are gonna happen in your life. You can't control it, whether it's injuries or breakups or certain things might just happen, deaths or whatever it may be, okay? So be careful. And the reason why we do this now, this workshop, this is for you. You set your goal, your number one goal now, right? And you've done your path. You've created a GPS. Right? For to get where I am today, how am I gonna get to here? One step along the way. I wanna do this and do this. For you, for example, one time a week, two times a week, three times a week, whatever it may be, eventually to where I'm working out and in my routine. Okay? It's important that we go back to these from time to time and, and develop these. Where am I at? What does this mean? How far along am I? Was it achievable? Because otherwise we're just swimming in the dark. We don't know where we're going, where we're headed, what we're trying to do, right? There, there's a, there's a, an old saying of, of Alice Wonderland, right? She, she, uh, she asked the cat, well, how do I get there? Which way should I take, she asked. And the answer is, well, where do you want to go? Uh, I don't know. Well, then it doesn't really matter which way you take. All right, if we don't know where we're headed, if we don't know where we're headed, how are we supposed to get there? So it's important to have that vision of where we're trying to get. How, how do I take each step? That's what helps with motivation. I am not a motivational speaker or coach. What I help people do is find people, what is it that motivates them? Because we all have motivation. So for some people, it's laying in the couch watching TV eating potato chips, right? That's their motivation. I can't change that. They just have to find something that makes them more motivated. And that's why these goals are your goals and your goals only. No one can change them. You should be proud of them. And what is it we focus on? 
we've all we've all faced stress in our life, right? We've all been stressed at times. Whatever, may, whoever you are, from whatever age, you you experience stress. When we look at stress, and we actually define stress. What is it? That is stress? It's not the facts of the situation that cause stress. It's not the building burning that causes the stress. It's not your father dying that causes the stress. It's what it is you focus on that causes the stress. Do we understand the difference there? What is your mental focus on at that particular moment? That is what causes stress. That is, again, the beginning or the end. What road am I choosing to take? We've all had deaths in our lives. We've all had tough experiences. If it's financial, if it's love, relationship. What is it we're choosing to focus on in that particular moment? I'm not saying that you should never grieve or never have tough times, but the stress from that comes from merely if we decide to focus on and that and only that, or if you know what, from this experience, I'm going to choose to focus on something else and hopefully new doors will open for me that I can move forward, further myself, further myself, keep moving and developing along the way. When doing so, it's important to go back to these. Is there anyone that wants to share their Every time I ask this question, I always get 50 hands that raise up. Well, this is the first group that didn't want to share. Nobody wants to share a goal they have. You shared your goal. I read out his goal. It wasn't that bad. He didn't get burned. He's okay. Anyone else? Somebody. Come on now. You guys are here for a reason today, right? More time with your children. More time with your children. And how are you going to achieve that? stuff if we can measure because there's objective goals and there's subjective goals right how you feel I want to feel happy well it's impossible for me to measure how you feel happy that's something subjective that's you then there's objective goals I want more time for myself I want to work out more times I want more time with my kids I want more money I want a better job whatever there's things that you can measure to understand those differences in goals that we set too objective goals and subjective goals okay but go back to these from time to time. Use this, develop this. Help your family, help your kids set goals. You know, it's, it's refer back to the poem too. It's about our effort. What effort am I putting into it? One goal might be everything I do, I want to put maximum effort into it. Everything that I want in life. Everything that I want in life. Everything that matters to me. I'm going to put maximum effort into it. How do I measure that? Did I sit on the couch? and eat potato chips while they were playing, or did I sit with them and build Legos? Did I work out on Friday night when I had time to do so? Whatever it is that matters to you, and again, I'm not trying to tell you what should matter to you. That's up to each and every person. For me today, I want to impact your lives. So I prepare, I'm gonna get maximum, I get one shot at this. I get one shot, I never get a chance to talk to you guys again for the first time. So I'm gonna make sure that I put forth my best efforts Maybe not my best lecture, but my best effort, and hopefully that can impact you guys. And then afterwards, I'll reevaluate it and see, okay, was that my best effort? Did I prepare properly? Should I have worn the white shirt instead of the black shirt? <laughs> in our side, again, we talk a lot about winning and losing, especially in the sports area, right? We, 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 success comes down to, for a lot of people, whether you won or lost. Did I get the job? Did I not get the job? And that becomes their definition of success. As soon as we talk about winning or losing, yes or no, did he say yes, did she say no? 
all of a sudden there's added pressure to it. Again, we're referring to someone else's judgment. We're looking at them. How did they interpret us? When I was single for a while there, after separating with uh, my children's mother, every girl I, I tried to ask out, it was some girls said yes, some girls said no. Does that mean I was successful or unsuccessful? No, because that was merely their interpretation of who I was as a person. It has nothing to do with how I am. I don't look at that as success. I did not add pressure to like, oh, but she's so many girls are saying no to me. Oh my gosh, that changes me, I'm different. I didn't start telling myself a different story. I said, okay, she doesn't like big noses. That's just, <laughs> that's, just, that's just who I am. She didn't like it, so okay. Have a good life, good luck to you. I hope you know the best for you. There's a great book that I hope everyone gets a chance to read one day, okay? It's called Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. They also made a movie for you who don't like to read. In the book, they talk about perfecting each movement. You're a movie person? You hear she's a movie you, 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 hit, you hit her like, you're not reading and you're gonna watch the movie. Sorry. The movie's good. Uh, in the book, um, I didn't read the book. In the book, they talk about perfecting each movement. The, the book is about a gymnast who wants to win the gold medal in the Olympics in his event. And his whole mindset is that he focuses on the gold medal the whole time. That's all he thinks about. He gets a new gymnast coach, or he meets someone who helps him along the way. And that coach talks to him about perfecting each movement along the way. So if, if I refer to basketball, for example, Instead of every time we shoot, we think, oh, I gotta make the shot. It's okay. Every time I shoot, my feet are gonna be balanced, my hips are gonna be put into the basket, my shoulders are gonna be aligned, hand under the ball, shoot the ball. Now we've perfected that movement. Right? Once I've let once the ball's left my hand, it's no longer in my control. I can only control these movements. Now whether the ball goes in the background is completely irrelevant. Whether I win the gold medal or not is completely irrelevant. <coughs> some people, like some swimmers that I've talked to along the way and helped them, they said, well, I want to win a gold medal in whatever they do. And then after reevaluating their, their performance, they said, well, I'm, I'm so disappointed, I did not win. I said, well, how would you swim? Well, I beat my personal best by three seconds. Shit, that's pretty damn good. <coughs> yeah, but someone else beat me by a second. That doesn't mean that you aren't successful. You beat your personal best by three seconds. Three seconds. And all of a sudden, you're looking at yourself as unsuccessful because someone else swam faster than you. Again, I get perfect balance, perfect the movement. I go to shoot, someone takes a basket and breaks the rim, removes the basket. That doesn't change that if my shot was perfect or not. Don't, re don't refer to the results. Refer back to perfecting each movement in life. There was three questions posed in the book over and over and over again, okay? And these questions for me become something I have in my office, in my car, I have them on the ceiling so I wake up every morning, I have t-shirts with them. I'm obsessed with these three questions, <laughs> okay? Where are you? That's one question. The answer is very easy. Very easy. I'm here. It's nowhere else. I am right here. I'm not thinking about what my kids are doing right now. I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about what's going on out there. I am right here talking to you, 40 people trying to affect your lives. When this is over, I'm done with you guys, and I'm on to my kids, right? I am in the moment, okay? Second, what time is it? You guys, you guys are quick. Now. Third one is, what are you? 
This one's a little, a little different. <coughs> this moment. This moment. Where are you here? What time is it? It's now. What are you? I am this moment. Now, we talk a lot about setting goals, long-term goals, right? And it's important to have that. But if you don't live like this, your life is gonna pass you by and you're gonna, you're gonna miss so many opportunities. So many opportunities in life. Of the, the joy that every day brings. The experiences that we get. If you're right now thinking about what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? You're, you're losing on this lecture, what the people around you have to offer, what the workouts have to offer. We have to be in the moment at all times. We have to be here and now, present. How many days do we get? We don't know. Stop wasting valuable time. These goals that you set, when do they start? When should you start working for those goals? Now. Now, there's no excuses to wait. There's no excuses. What's one goal you wrote? What's the one goal you want to achieve? There you go. Now, start. Now. Boom. You don't wait till Monday. I'm going to start on Monday. First, we're going to watch Sonic today. We're going to watch you do a little bit chips. And I'll go have a few beers. No, it starts right now. What's, what's one of your goals? Wow. Okay. All right, now, boom. You should actually get up and try right now. Okay? It starts right now. What is it we're choosing to focus on? What is our state of mind? Okay? And I have a little story that defines the differences in state of minds. If you don't take anything with you today, remember this story and remember that you choose your state of mind. What are we choosing to focus on? There's two patients in a hospital. One is laying by the wall, one is laying by the window. They're both in bed, neither one can move. For each day, they get 60 minutes where the nurses come in and they lift the patients up so they can sit up. During those 60 minutes, the patient by the window can see out of the corner of the window, barely gets a glimpse of what's going on outside. For that hour every day, that patient tells the other patient what he sees. He tells them, well, the birds are flying, the grass is growing, the lovers are kissing, the kids are playing, the water is running wild, the sun is shining. For each and every day, he tells them what he sees, what he experiences. They live for those 60 minutes. These 60 minutes obviously become the best part of the day, the only thing they look forward to. But as time goes, the patient by the wall begins to envy the other patient. His state of mind changes. He focuses on the fact that he doesn't get to see the stuff that he, he gets to see. His envy grows and grows and grows like a cancer. The envy becomes jealousy. The jealousy becomes hatred. Why don't I get to see what's going on? Why don't I get to see the kids playing? That hatred becomes so strong that one night when the patient by the window is choking in their sleep, the other patient doesn't even call for help. The hatred is so strong, he doesn't even call for help. That is his focus. I hate you so much, I don't even care about your life. Because of that, the patient by the window dies, suffocates in their sleep. The next morning, the nurses come in, they roll out the bed and the body. The patient by the wall asks, hey, can I get to be by the window? The nurses answer, of course, of course. They roll him over, lay him by the window, and close the door. He fights and fights because he wants to see out the window. He struggles with all his might and finally gets a glimpse out of the window. He looks out and sees nothing but a brick wall. 
There were no kids. There were no lovers kissing. There was no grass. There was no sun shining. There was no water running wild. The patient was by the window each and every day focused on changing or affecting the other patient's life in a positive way. That was their focus. That was their goal. They had a strategy, they had a story, they had a state of mind. I want to lift you up. So I simply ask you guys, do you guys want to be the people who lift other people up and change other people's way in a light, positive way? That kind of state of mind? Or do you want to be the people who bring people down and bring our society down and down and down? Because that's really all a choice that we all have. That is a state of mind that we choose to focus on. So anytime you feel sorry for yourself or you feel, you know what, I'm telling my story, think back to this story. Which patient do I want to be? How do I want to remember? How do I want to affect people's lives? What state of mind do I want to have? Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> Thank you.